A third convoy carrying Russian humanitarian aid is being unloaded in the eastern Ukrainian city of Donetsk, delivering much-needed supplies to the devastated area. Roman Kostrev is there for us. It carries uh, around uh, 2,000 tons of uh, aid, uh, really essential for the locals, and some of whom uh, haven't had water or electricity for months that uh, the shelling has been uh, going on here by the Ukrainian uh, military. The locals will also receive uh, over 300 electric generators and uh, uh, 30 tons of uh, medicine. This is the third time that Russia delivers humanitarian aid here. The first time was uh, back in August, and at that point, uh, Russian humanitarian aid was uh, stalled at the border due to lack of a go-ahead by the uh, Ukrainian government. Nevertheless, it went through and uh, this second humanitarian aid convoy arrived in Lugansk last week, actually was exactly uh, on Saturday. Okay, let's get some analysis from political commentator Alexander Mercurius. Alexander, welcome to the program. After the second convoy delivered aid to Lugansk, the EU slammed the move, saying it threatened Ukraine's sovereignty. But how is bringing food and water a threat to Kiev? Well, um, it isn't. I mean, if, if one is talking about international law, which is, I suppose, what uh, one should be, then it, the, there is actually a decision from the International Court of Justice which says that there is nothing wrong with delivering humanitarian aid. It is not against law. It does not uh, dispute sovereignty. It is not an action against Kiev. It actually helps civilians. So I, I don't really see why there are these complaints about these humanitarian convoys. Um, the only thing they seem to do is good. But then again, Brussels does know the problem is there. So why haven't we seen any humanitarian efforts from them, for instance? I think the problem Brussels has is that they don't particularly want to admit uh, that there is a humanitarian crisis in the eastern Ukraine publicly by sending aid, because, of course, that would contradict the narrative that they have, um, which is that there wasn't uh, um, a tremendous war there fought by Kiev. Um, if they actually sent supplies to places like Donetsk and Lugansk and wherever, um, it would effectively admit that these places have been heavily shelled by the people the European Union itself supports. Now, about a week into the truce, President Poroshenko said he would welcome military aid from the US and NATO. How does this add up with peace efforts and a supposedly finalised truce? Well, it is not. It does not. I mean, it, it would be completely contradictory. At the moment, it has to be said, he's claiming that he's getting all these pledges of support. There's no visible sign of it on the ground. And I think the reason he is making these sort of comments is more political than military, in the sense that he needs pledges of military aid from the West, or wants pledges of military aid from the West, as a sign that they politically support him in his efforts to keep Ukraine together. Um, the fact that, that a, those, those promises are not being made in public is itself very indicative of what the true situation is now. Political commentator Alexander Mercurius, great to get your take this hour. Thank you.